Hello and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be talking about capture cards. Specifically, the best capture card I've ever had, and this is by far the best capture card you can get for streaming. Now you might be wondering for a second, hold on, I know this capture card, this is a piece of crap. But no, this is a brand new capture card. You're probably thinking of this one, right here. A couple of years ago, this capture card released, and got pretty popular, mainly because of its price point, which was about $4 or something like that. It's a very simple USB 2.0 capture card, and with an HDMI input, what this does is it can capture 720p60 or 1080p 30fps, but only MJPEG, so the video quality wasn't all that great. It couldn't do YUY2 or NV12 or anything like that. There was a really neat feature about this capture card, which I loved, by the way. But because of the constraints, I just could not recommend it to anyone as a serious capture card. Enter the HDMI video capture 4K U3. This capture card is exactly what I was looking for. It fixes all the shortcomings of this one. Mainly that this one now supports YUY2. And not only that, it also supports USB 3.0, so 1080p 60 capturing is possible. If we take a look at the box, it's fairly simple. It looks pretty nice. On the back it says, The video capture can capture both HDMI video and HDMI audio. Not sure about the audio part. I really couldn't get that one working yet. I haven't really bothered either because I have a different setup for capturing audio. Suitable for high definition acquisition, which is really good. 1080p 60Hz, max resolution supported. It will also take 4K 30, but only as a, you know, it will downscale it to 1080p 60. Now why is this the best capture card for streamers and not anything else like some name brand capture card? When this came out, it cost about $8 on places like AliExpress or eBay. But it didn't offer that much because it could only support USB 2.0 and MJPEG video format. This, on the other hand, cost 18 to 19 US dollars at the time of recording, including postage. But it supports 1080p 60, YY2. And the greatest thing about it, other than the price, is that just like this capture card, this one also has an internal scaler. What that means is you can basically input any resolution you want and you can just leave it at whatever setting you want to use. So what I mean is, let's say you have another capture card. This is the one I used to use. This is a 1080p 60 capture card as well. But with this one, when I input whatever resolution, I had to match it in, say, OBS to be able to get any video out of it. So if I input 1280 by 960, I would have to also set this capture card up to 1280 by 960. With this one, you don't have to. You can leave this at 1080p 60 and input whatever resolution you want. It will upscale it. Now, some people might already know that that's incredible because you don't have to mess around with resolutions anymore in OBS and what have you. But what's also amazing about this is it sort of works like a monitor. So that means you can input any resolution, not just the your typical resolution, such as 720p, 1080p, what have you, but you can input anything, and I do mean anything. Basically, you can use this with an OSSC or an old computer and just input whatever resolution. It will upscale it to 1080p without you touching any of the settings. That is why this is the best streamer capture card out there, and it's also the cheapest one. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to hook this up to my uh, computer and we can take a look at the settings in OBS. Okay, so here we are at my computer and there are a couple things I have to mention that are very important when buying this thing. So some people might have been fooled into buying this same exact thing, the, uh, the USB 2.0 version, but in sort of a scam because uh, there are sometimes scams where they claim that this can do uh, YUY2 
in 1080p60 and stuff like that, sometimes they even like paint this little piece, little USB piece blue to make you think it's USB 3.0, but it's still the same crap. Don't buy those. You have to make sure that you're buying the right thing. And the way you can pretty much tell is that most of the sellers that will sell the real thing, the USB 3.0 one, will tell you the name of the chip. The name of the chip is actually MS2130. So that's what you're looking for. That is the... It's actually only a couple months old, this development. And it's a USB 3.0 chip, a bridge chip, that will work um, hooking it up to to your computer actually will communicate via USB 3.0. It will tell you right here, this is the name of the capture card, USB 3.0 UHD. If it's anything else, you've been screwed. So when we go down to the options here, you can see that's the top resolution, 1080p. You can set up any resolutions. Any of these will work just fine. Doesn't matter what you choose. You can like set up to 1600 by 1200 and still have 60 FPS, so that's pretty awesome. And like I said, input resolution doesn't need to be the same. It will just, you know, have to be set up to whatever you want to use. But I usually use 1080p and 60 hertz. I set it to NTSC 5994. Video format, there's no MJPEG, only YOY2. And my color space is default, color range set to full because I'm using an OSSC right now. Speaking of which, that's the main thing I want to show. So as you can see, I had it set to 1080p. So the input resolution currently is actually uh, 1440 by 960. That's the uh, 480i to uh, 2x upscale in the OSSC. So it's outputting 1440 by 960. And when we switch to the game, it's going to be 240p uh, 4x upscale, so 1280 by 960. And I didn't change the resolution, it's just taking it. That's it, it's right there. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you is we're going to take a look at a couple different uh, resolutions. Alright, so now I'm recording at the computer. Uh, and I'm just going to show you PlayStation 1 uh, hooked up via RGB to my OSSC uh, because that's pretty much the number one problematic uh, system one of the more problematic systems. I don't have a SNES so I can't show you the um, you know the slightly off spec 60.1 hertz or something like that uh, refresh rate but this should work well enough. This is a PAL PS1 modified with a mod chip so the, the BIOS is actually NTSC as well. But anyways, I'm just going to turn it on. And you'll see that the uh, this is 480i output in 1440x960. I've chosen uh, one game to showcase, two different versions of one game. Silent Hill, Japanese version and then PAL version so we can test all the different uh, frequencies and resolutions. This game switches between 240p and 480i so you'll see some transitions and it handles them perfectly. It basically when that happens the OSSC is switching from uh, from 1440 by 960 in 480i mode to 1280 by 960 in 240p mode and it's working perfectly. And here the menu is also this is a 480i menu when I go into the options, it's going to be 240p. And I didn't have to change anything. It just automatically switches the resolution. It's just set up to 1080p 60 in uh, OBS. And yeah, I can input whatever resolution. I do use the, uh, the 4x mode because I play a lot of PlayStation. But if I was using an OSSC with Super Nintendo, then I would probably just use the, uh, the 5x mode. So, as you can see, I've got 4x mode set up for 240p and 4x for 480i as well. Um, but yeah, you can use 5x on this thing as well, so I'm just going to switch it to 5x just for now. There you go. It's outputting 1600 by 1200 and you can also capture that with the capture card, no problem. Doesn't cause any issues. But you can also just use the 1080p mode or the 
of the 1290 by 1200 as uh, 1912 sorry 1920 by 1200 mode works too as well as the 1920 by 1080 mode for 5x if you have an ossc you already know what an insane game changer this is because i can just do whatever resolution and i don't have to change it in obs it's the perfect streamer capture card so as you can see 4x 5x every mode of arcs and you can actually capture 1600 by 1200 as you could see earlier it's an option in the capture card so you can just set it to 1600 by 1200 and then you can capture a, a, a sharp 5x upscale from the ossc but for ease of use i think it's much nicer to just set it up to 1080p and then i set all my devices to 1080p like my other scalers are also outputting 1080p or something below that and then it just gets upscaled to 1080p and then i also stream in 1080p by the way check out my twitch channel if you're interested links in the description i might also make a video later on uh detailing how i use this capture card for uh capturing old computers because you know old computers your resolution is always going to be something different and this takes all of them as well no problem um it's just insane i'm so happy about this capture card and i think you will be too if you're in a similar situation as i am uh i'm just going to boot up the pal version of uh, silent hill so we can test 1440 by 1152 for 576i and uh, there it is it's a little bit wobbly I, I think the reason it's wobbly is just because like there's some like uh, power issue with my uh, setup and I really need to figure that stuff out but you can get PAL working perfectly on here as well so both like 4x power resolutions are working perfectly with the OSSC without having to change any settings. Now, I know there will be some people asking this, and I really cannot recommend playing from the OBS preview, but some people still do it. I don't know why you would do that. Don't do it. It's stupid. But uh, for those people who want to do that, the input latency is about 60 to 70 uh, milliseconds, so it's perfectly doable. It's just a normal USB 3.0 or internal capture card latency, it's pretty nice. Uh, I really cannot recommend playing through the preview because you're introducing so many problems, but for those people it works. And uh, I guess all the capture cards have some downfalls some kind of problems. No capture card is perfect. Um, I really could not be bothered about all the shortcomings that this has because it really doesn't matter for me. Um, one thing that people will probably mention is that it only has an HDMI input and no pass-through. That really doesn't bother me because I never use the pass-through on any capture cards. I just basically split the HDMI signal before it gets to the capture card so I can directly hook it up to my monitor and that problem is solved. Also, capturing audio, I really could not be bothered to figure it out. You can probably do that somehow. I can be bothered trying to set up HDMI capture because it's always been a bit of an issue in OBS. It's never very reliable. I just use my sound card and good old analog three and uh, three and a half millimeter cables to capture audio for uh, systems that use HDMI I just basically since like I said I have an HDMI splitter the signal will go into my monitor as well and then I just take the headphone output of my monitor as a three and a half millimeter jack plug it into my sound card and I've got HDMI audio you but yet like I said you can probably set it up just fine the price is something that just cannot be beaten, and if someone were to complain that, oh, it's not a name brand capture card, look, if you enjoy getting shafted by the big name brand companies, like, not gonna name them, but you know who I'm talking about, if you just want to get shafted with a capture card that costs about 200 or $300 because you think that for the money you get a good product, then... Uh, I don't know what to tell you. If you can't take a gamble on a $19 capture card, if you don't like it, well, it costs 10% of the price of a 
of a name brand capture card and it de it delivers so much more i have never purchased willingly a name brand capture card i have one name brand capture card i really don't like it it's got a lot of problems uh, i got it uh, given to me and uh, i i've mainly used no name aliexpress ebay capture cards and they've worked just as well as a name brand capture card would have but with this one this one works better because no name brand capture card has all these features the internal scaler is just insane and the video quality is really good as well so i really don't think you can go wrong with this capture card maybe like i said in the future i'll do a follow-up video on how i capture my old computers using this capture card I uh, used to have a much more complicated setup. That's another thing, that this capture card has just changed my setup so for, for the better. It's so much better now because it's just much more simple. I had to use several scalers in the past because of the ease of use and you know not having to change the resolution all the time. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you'd like, you could also check out my Twitch streams where I'm actually only using this capture card from now on for everything. So... That's a thing. Thank you.